afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another Propaganda Cast State of the Balance. You'll need a host right before the big patch hits. In fact, this will be going up the same day as the patch. Ah, uh, this is going to be awkward, but still, you know, they deserve to be made because there'll probably be some things that carry on, of course, in, you know, from Murder Game into what the new patch hits. Probably for some extent, of course, with the Overcome Command OS. We'll see how about that. But anyway, so looking at the current situation, there has been some changes in the meta game. Some shifts, some bigger, some smaller, some possibly in preparation for the patch. Others, it is harder to say with. Looking at the Americans, there's a certain shift towards more players actually going for lieutenant. So, you know, heavy captain play has assaulted more players being prepared for that. So that way, going for the lieutenant does mean... You can swing in with a harder punch and all of a sudden again they're less prepared for the M20, for the A half tech and for the lieutenant himself which of course is quite a strong assault you more or less get for free as you take up. So in that regard you know the Americans are swinging a bit more towards that. Heavy cavalry and tactical support are still popular though I am seeing slightly more players now beginning to use rifle company again it seems like the remembering again flame throws are good and of course the EC8 is also good. When well handled. Beyond that, there's not really a huge set of changes there with the American meta game. It is still very focused, still routes around captains, stewards, pack houses, inter Shermans, maybe with a Jackson. On your know, Pershing with Rangers and so on there. But again, slightly more lieutenants, 50 calibers, M20s, and of course, lots of BAR still, lots of bazookas. They are pretty much very prevalent alongside smoke grenades and regular grenades. But again, BARs are very much very common since it just provides such a huge boost to infantry. They can pretty much stand to toe to toe with even the most elite German infantry, which, you know, is a lot there. So, that's one thing that's going on there with the Americans. But overall, nothing sort of huge. There's been no real bigger shifts beyond that. For the British, it's more or less the same as there. There's, you know... Vanguard is still popular, Commando not so much, otherwise advanced emplacement and mobile assault are rather the key there. There's been no huge changes there. I think we're seeing slightly less armoured cars that is ACs, slightly less, there's of course still some do for it, more, slightly more Bovo, slightly more mortars, but more universal carriers, possibly in preparation for the patch, but also possibly because they're just realising it's actually pretty solid in the early game just to throw off the Germans, it does allow the British player to be a lot more aggressive and just harass them. Quite solidly for only a 210 manpower unit, which is quite potent, really. So that's also a little thing that is happening there. But beyond that, the British meta game is overall sort of, you know, stay where it is, sections, take up very rapidly, get some sappers up, bolster, front and brand guns, have really tough infantry that can deal a lot of damage. At which point, again, you sort of pull quickly for a fast crumble. For example, in this case, you just sort of take it wherever you want to, really, because in most cases, unless you sort of suffered huge losses, I mean, you'll be in a pretty strong position. So, in that sense, not really a lot has changed there. I'm starting to feel like, you know, the British there could do with some uh, nerves. They were all a bit too durable, possibly, I think, there. And similarly, the Americans, there might be some slight change that's a veteran to sort of need it some... Slight less bonus there because it does mean the Americans tend to sort of in the mid to late game run around a lot in the open not needing cover because they can just soak up so much more damage which isn't really good. That's a brief thought there. And then looking at the Soviets we're seeing slightly more scout cars actually sort of responsive cool bikes, more snipers, more penal troops. I suspect the more penal troop players, probably because, I mean, they are half good. I mean, some players realise that, but of course, I think it's more preparation just for the patch again, where again, the penal troops then really get buffed and get really good. And I would certainly expect a lot more penal troops once the patch hits alongside scout cars or snipers. So that's definitely going to be nice there. Otherwise, T-70 rushes are very much a thing. Slightly more M5 half tracks. S-76 is still very prevalent. Shock rifle is sort of, I think, sort of the big deal. I mean, it's actually starting to get back in with shock tubers. There's still very much got motor. Reserve army and such doctrines there. There's sort of, you know, pull the main sort of... Uh, uses with the Soviets. We're also seeing slightly more T-34-76s and probably also see them more after the patch as the machine guns get buffed. So that's certainly something to look out for and be slightly disconcerted about. So that's a little thing that also happening. But beyond that, there's not really been any huge changes for the certain meta game. Overall, we have to see, of course, what their changes do for them down the road and sort of how that affects. But overall, I mean, again, with, you know, stronger T-34s, H-35s, Penal troops, I mean, overall, they really got a lot of the benefits there. So, 
something to watch for there. Looking at the Germans over Command of S, slightly less Pantry Check spam. Of course, some players are still trying to get as much out of it before the patch. It's same with Jaeger spam. Flat calf tax, battle group headquarters, seeing less users, a lot more looks and Puma play. They're mostly looks, some are going for most Stukas and Fusas, though overall feel like it's not a very solid choice half the time. But otherwise, it's very much Panzer Force and King Tigers. Panthers, Jack Panzers see minimal usage because they just really have minimal effect on the battlefield, really. So no huge surprises there, similarly in the flat calf tax is rare usage because it's rather too clunky a unit to sort of get any sort of real impact out of half the time I feel. Doctrinally, it's very much scavenge, a bit of fortification, a bit of Luftwaffe, a bit of elite armoured. Again, they tend to only use it for storm team and maybe a bit of heat rounds. Most of the other abilities pretty much see no usage because they're rather terrible. But in doctrinal use, it's a bit spread, but overall, no huge changes there, really. No huge changes. And then finally, the Wehrmacht. Overall, the biggest change is there's more players trying to make tier 4 work, but in most cases, it doesn't quite work. I mean, we are seeing some sort of making it work, but generally it tends to be, you know, because they're able to sort of get a solid strong opposition against the opponent. But even then, the question, you know, those matches always tend to be, wouldn't they have just perform better if they'd gone for tier 3 instead of playing for tier 4? And I think in every one of those cases, you could pretty much say, yes, tier 3 would have done so much better than tier 4. So in that sense, tier 4 pretty much still is a novelty for the Wehrmacht. Nothing that sort of really has any effect when they already have to spend so many resources taking up just to get towards it and then have to build it and then actually get any units up, which is just expensive and don't really pack enough of a punch there. Overall, it's starting to feel like the Wehrmacht is just sort of a lot of half thought out designs that sort of got slapped together then slightly removed as they sort of realized it didn't work and then you just sort of have this mishmash that doesn't quite work. Tier 4, for example, is largely, you know, might as well not be there. Blitzkrieg for a lot of their units, for example, doesn't quite make sense either. It's not really an offensive ability. It's an ability to get out of there, not attack with, because it doesn't give you any offensive bonuses. I mean, not like the old Blitzkrieg, which was sort of a mass ability, but actually, you know, provided offensive bonuses, making action, you know, towards attacking. But this one is more defensive in nature. So, you know, it doesn't quite make sense then. That's, you know, sort of where it adds up. For example, Panzer Gunner is Veteran 3 really counts it up to Veteran 3 rifle with BARs. Yet again, they're supposed to be the infantry, yet they aren't. So, I mean, they're, you know, it's, it's starting to seem a bit odd. Also, 250 and a half tracks. Tier 2, but again, you know, you have to get a lot for that tier 2. Yet, it's the weakest half track, essentially, that's non doctrinal. Yet, you know, in reality, it was the most advanced half track, which is also the most bulletproof. Yet, it's the least bulletproof that does the least fear of her faction with the smallest squad. So, I mean, there's a lot of bits there. I can't help but feel, you know, they really could do the gesture of cleaning up the design and figuring out where they want you to take the Valm up. Because right now, it's just like there's bits of design here and there. But no clear overall direction. Just yeah, several times they've gone, well, you know, this is too good. Let's nerf it. But no real new ideas. And then by now, where we've got a lot of the Western eyes in, the design is really being still feel old, stale, and just fragmented. When they just the allies have so much smarter and, you know, more functional design. And all centered around tier 3 tiers, whereas the Wehrmacht has 4 tiers. So I really think, you know, what Relic needs to do once the patch is out is... Basically, you know, try to figure out what one to the Wehrmacht. They need to just look at the design and, you know, figure it out. At least, you know, make Tier 4 make more sense to the Wehrmacht because currently, even if they are making it slightly cheaper, it's still a pretty bad investment because, again, there's just no real benefits towards going for it when, again, every other faction is designed around Tier 3 tiers. But beyond that, there's, with the Wehrmacht, not really much has changed. Again, it just... Some going for tier 4 for the novelty, otherwise Panzer Force, Stugs. Some are trying more Ostman, so I just feel like the Ostman is not really a good choice either. And doctrinally, it's Lightning Roar, um, Elite Troops, a bit of Blitzkrieg, a bit of Lightning Roar. I don't think I already mentioned that one. You know, all the ones for the Command Tank, Mobile Defense, Mechanized Assault there for the Stu Crutch player, because again, usually around that point, many Vermont players will struggle because... They can't really do enough without it. I mean, again, their attacking structure is awkward. And, you know, their light vehicles don't quite pack a punch. Again, the tier 2 for the Wehrmacht is also pretty awkward. Despite, again, you do have to pay a lot of resources to get towards it. So, again, they really need to just, you know, have a look at the Wehrmacht. They just need to sort of, after the patch, just go, all right, we're going to take a look at the Wehrmacht. We're going to figure out what the hell we want it to do. Because right now, it just seems like it's just 
it's not there. It might have been once, but it's just so much more negative design than your actual direction towards it. Just it shouldn't be this, it should be that, but it's got no real clear direction. And that's really a problem for the Wehrmacht. And it's only getting more pronounced as they just keep buffing the Allies and you know boosting them and the Wehrmacht doesn't really get anything. Yet there's clear issues like again, barely anyone going for tier four, and when it does, it's for the hell of it. So yeah, I think that rather covers here the uh State of the bounce. It'll be interesting to see you know, what get you know next month around the twentieth. Once you sort of get the patch out, sort of be able to play through it. What sort of actually happens? But again, I do feel like Vermont's going to get caught up there with the shorter end of the stick. That's my prediction so far. We'll of course have to see if that actually is true or if I somehow got it wrong. I mean, it would be fun if I did, certainly. But I fear I won't be. But anyways, thank you all for joining in. Hope you enjoyed this. Hopefully this got a video of the meta game. And hopefully perhaps prepared you a bit, you know, for what comes next month. If you did, you know, subscribe, like, share it with your friends and so on there. But this is Imperial Link signing off. And see you all another time. Cheers.